Hey, it's the latest episode of The Ugly Truth. Today, we are recording this show on Valentine's Day, so there is a little bit of a tinge of Valentine's Day discussions. I am obsessed with the new show on Netflix and our ugly and awkward moments of the week. Thank you so much for listening. Enjoy the show. It's another uncensored look at the world around you from sisters who will say just about anything to anyone at any time. It's the Uggs. Jamie. You're going to kill somebody with that thing. Paula. I'm being punished by the universe, Mother Nature, God. Uncensored as always, it's time for the Ugly Truth. Welcome to the Ugly Truth. This is episode 440. That's whatever. Do it again. Uh, <laughs> sit down. You're going to hurt yourself. I, I have the period from hell right now. I literally like am hemorrhaging. I Aww. am like from the gate. And you don't tampon, right? You have to do the. I've got to do the pads. And you so, gotta do pads. well, the thing with tampons is, is that if I use them, I bleed through them anyway. So I have to end up wearing something. And so I'm just like, what's the point then? You know, it's stupid. And tampons always feel weird to me because <laughs> it's just like this little bloody string hanging out of my body. And I'm just like, right. this is stupid. You know, and then I go to pull on it and it's like, all, it's like a slug. And I'm just Bleh. You know, so it's a texture thing for you. I have to tell you that the, the day I started my period, I was 12, I think. 11 or 12. And I did the pad thing. You were that young? Yeah. Well, 12 is not young. Well, I mean. I was in middle school. They always say you usually take after your mom. I was 13. You were also a malnourished, skinny little thing. I got my period like four days after Tyler was born. I remember that. What? I know. Isn't that weird? weird? No. I mean, yes, it's weird. Anyway, so when I started my period, of course, in our house, and I'm such a relic. That when I was in school in sixth, fifth or sixth grade, when we did, you know, human uh, sexuality, they called it the sex ed class. Mm -hmm. They they taught us about pads and how they also had the old days where they had the belts that (gasps) women would wear. You had those ones? You had the, are you there, God? It's me, Margaret pads. <laughs> For, no, I read and learned about them, but yes, it was the eighties. There, there was very little in in technology for women's menstrual cycles back then. In fact, they would do. There are these things called tampons, but under their breath, but only whores wear those. You know, it's like nobody of any, you know, of any moral stature would wear tampons back in the day. Maybe hippies, but nobody, you know, no good Christian girls would dare wear tampons. Well, you know who had that same thought process was mom. Our mother. Yes. (laughs) So we did the pads. And, you know, in fact, when when I was up and coming into the world of, you know, womanhood, they invented the ones with wings and I was so excited because I, how many pairs of underwear do you ruin when you're on your period? Like a million. I have my period underwear and I, so I, I. I refuse. Like Victor was trying to fold my laundry. I'm like, no! He's like, what? I'm like, don't. I'm like, those have all my period underwear. Those are mine. He's Leave like, Paula. Alone. He's like, this isn't my first red day. I'm like, I don't care. I'm like, they have it doesn't holes. matter. They're stained. It looks like I've pooped in them. I'm like, they're ugly. Yeah. They're huge. Just don't. You know what? I put those on and I just punish myself. I'm like, this is what you deserve. (laughs) I'm like, it's a sight of me. No one should see. No one. This is me. This is mine. Yeah. These are the things that I wear when I'm watching TV and crying over dumb, stupid things. The only one that sees those is Pablo. And that's because I have to take them from him. (laughs) When I've got my heating pad on and I'm eating my favorite shitty food and I'm watching Netflix and crying. This is what it is. I know. It's It's part of my kit. (laughs) <laughs> um, anyway, so I was about four, 14 or 15, and of course, our horror ex-stepmother wore only tampons. Well, because when she got hers, that's what her mother gave her. <laughs> right, because they're whores. And I'm just like, can you imagine being that young and someone handing you a tampon? No, I'd probably, it would be horrifying. I remember when I thought I wanted to use tampons, mom <laughs> bought me like the pinky slims. Yeah. You know, they were like Capri yeah. cigarettes, practically. Little children's tampons. Jamie, I don't yes. even think I knew where my vagina was. I oh, I just gosh. was putting it down there, and I was just, like, trying to shove it. Well, and I was just like, it's, it? I'm like, it's got to go somewhere. <laughs> and so there's got to be some I think opening. it just went up, like, my lips, you know, and, like. Oh, you didn't get, you didn't penetrate. I think it went in one of the folds. And I'm like, I did it! 
What? <laughs> <laughs> or I did put it up my urethra. I don't know. Oh but... my god, that you would have known. So you I came out and I tried to like you know do Walk. a jump like in the commercials. So I'm like, ow, ow. <sighs> you did not do it. No, yeah. I didn't. I didn't start wearing them until after I got married. To be perfectly honest. So I tried when I was 14 or 15, I asked our stepmom for one because I said, you know, it was summer and I was hot and I wanted to go swimming and you can't when you're wearing a pad. And so I I spent, I read that box diligently from B, point A to point Z on how to insert these things. Wouldn't it be nice if our body looked like that diagram? Right. So I tried doing the, you know, leg on the toilet seat. <laughs> we all did that. <laughs> Ultimately, I even laid down on my back on the floor <laughs> trying to get it Put in. Put your legs in the air. I slathered it with Vaseline. <laughs> I tried everything. And, you know, the thing is when, I mean, it goes one of two ways when you're at that age. You're either having the flow from hell or you're barely spotting. I was barely spotting. Oh, God. And so it was impossible. You don't want to put a dry tape on it. It was very painful. And so I said, all right, well, that's the end of that. I guess I'm relegated to pads. Now I know what my mother was talking about. Only whores wear them. And of course, our stepmom used the OBs that had zero oh, applicator. Oh, God. What is it? You just put your finger in there? It was a giant fucking magnum slug of a bullet. Jeez. And I'm like, this isn't working. And so anyway, I that was the end of that. And then I had sex when I was 18. Mm -hmm. And shock of all shocks. It was a piece of cake. You know, isn't <laughs> then, it funny that you can get a penis in there, but it's not you. It's the man. Where there's a will, yes. there's a way. There's a way. Oh, yes. We, we, can't, we couldn't force ourselves to get a tampon in there, but a man <laughs> will make sure a penis will get in there. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Virgin or not, he's all it's going in. <laughs> it's, it's happening. Just be prepared. Here we go. Luckily, you know, it wasn't Daryl, so it was easy. It was not hard at all. It was very simple. I'm trying to think back. I would say it was mid to medium-ish. Mm. No, it's not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Yeah. You know, luckily when you're a virgin, when, when a woman's a virgin, she doesn't have any clue. They all feel massive. You know what, though? Which is probably why guys have that weird fetish about wanting to de-virginize girls because they have no idea. Yeah, but it's like the worst sex ever. Oh, God, it's terrible. The girl's just laying there and they're like, I don't know what to do. The thing is, is you can try to romanticize, oh, it was our wedding night and it was so beautiful, but it hurts like hell and you feel awkward, okay? It's the ultimate awkward moment. And plus, I mean, you tell the guy, stop moving, don't, stop, ah, uh, no, wait, go slower. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like this. And they're, and they're trying like, to hold it back. And then, you know, <laughs> 10 seconds later, you feel a squirt. You're like, what? what is that it? And like, he's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not. Thanks. Get up out of bed going, oh, my God, that was horrible. Like, I, I have to pee. And then it feels like razor blades. And for a lot of us, it's like our first time letting somebody see you naked. And, you know, it's just. Yeah, I think well, I, I think I put a robe such... on. <laughs> I'm just like. What are you, 90? It was the, no, it was the complimentary <laughs> robe that came at the hotel. Oh, Those things are like, you know. As thin as Sandpaper. a washcloth. <laughs> yeah, oh, yes. basically. Yeah, my first time was at our at our dad's house. They had gone trout. They went skiing you or something. You lost your virginity at dad's house? Well, I had a room there. It was my bedroom. But, I know, uh, but my boyfriend. Oh, God, that's gross. My boyfriend at the time, who is, you know, he was nice enough, but he was a little older. And he had been trying for a very long time to get some of this. Mm -hmm. And so finally. Was it his I, first time too or no? Oh, God, no. Oh, okay. okay and okay. so. Finally, I let it happen, and it was really uncomfortable and awkward. I did not like the. I didn't like the process. I didn't like this naked guy on top of me. You know, it 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 hurt. So it hurt, did, and it was a weird hurt I'd never felt before. Do you wish you had waited? No, I no, I didn't. I, I, remember, I was ready. I remember feeling extraordinarily full, like I had to poop or something. Well, I you were also Paula. You were so tiny. That's You're such true. A I was like ninety five pounds. So. Yes, I was. I was not fat or anything, but I was not what you were. You had nothing. Yeah, I, was I have a way bigger little. ass than you. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, you I let him put it in your ass. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I knew we were doing it wrong. That's why it hurt so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that was when she got into porn. Everyone, no, it happened, and you know he came immediately. Yes. But apparently it got, he went in. I go, did you get it in all the way before you did that? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, well, okay, I guess it's done. And then the second time it hurt a little bit. By the third time, I was like, this is the most amazing thing in the world. Oh, it God, was like, no. It took me a while. 
Oh no, third time was a charm for me. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is awesome. Let's do everything. I was like, I was just like a maniac set free. Well, I don't know if you guys like waited in between, but because we went straight to our honeymoon and we were in Hawaii mm-hmm. for seven days, like right. every time after that, it just seemed to get like progressively worse because it was just oh like, I, well, it kept like I was picking a scab, you know, and I was just oh, like, oh. oh, like I need a break. You know, No, we only did it. We only did the first night. We only did it once. And then, of course, he was like, you want to do it again tomorrow? And I'm like, uh, can we give it a minute? And then so we did it like two days later. And then after that, it was like the floodgates had opened and he had no idea what he had done because then. I just wanted to do everything all the time. Yeah. Was, I was like a 12 year old boy. I was just like, let's, let's see what happens when you do this. Yeah. I no. was super, I was super empowered. I mean, we were together <laughs> by ourselves for seven days and you know, once that had happened, it was like, you know, two or three times a day. And so yeah. I was just like, I, I just need a moment. I'm surprised I didn't get a UTI. Jeez. I'm like, my vag- my vagina is dying right now. Can you please let me have a sits bath or something, this please? This girl is on fire. Right? <laughs> God. <laughs> Anyway, so yes, it is Valentine's Day, and although we talked, we touched briefly on a, on the science of why we hate it or whatever, it is Valentine's Day, and it was funny because, of course, there's just like a million little articles about Valentine's Day, and I found this one that made me laugh. I wanted to tell you a couple of them. What some single ladies are doing today? They did this little poll, and I I pulled I pulled some, and I thought they were really funny. Okay. Someone goes, "I'm making a cake, drinking rum, and I'm eating it and drinking it all by myself." I mean, <laughs> and I thought okay. I would do that. That sounds awesome. I don't see what the big damn deal is. Like, as if you don't acknowledge it, it's not a problem. The thing is, is you can we can say all of that, but the reality is, is it's hanging over us like a big thing. Well, you can't that is it, you true. can't ignore our society. It just really smothers us in it. So you have to kind of go. All right, fine. This is my way. <laughs> She and her, she goes, um, my friends and I are getting into our pajamas and we're watching Cinderella and eating carbs. And I'm like, oh, that's a California girl right there. This girl, (laughs) this one's weird. I'm going to Hooters with my friends because if you bring a picture of your ex, they shred it for you and give you 10 free wings. (laughs) Okay. I'm like, okay, well, I mean, if you're, if you're going through a bitter breakup, it's, it's, I can get, I get it. Then the last one, which I can't even fathom because it makes me like sick to my stomach. Somebody's celebrating Valentine's Day with 35 of her friends. I'm like, who has 35 friends to, that are single to celebrate Valentine's Day? That's a lot of That's women. That's a lot. That's Paula, never, never in a million. I mean, not even my my baby shower had 35 women. I can't. I can't. Like I get emails sometimes for like these professional women's conferences. And I'm just like, Ugh, no, me too. I can't. Like, I don't want to <laughs> be empowered. I just I don't want to be surrounded by a bunch of women who smell like Victoria's Secret. You know, I don't want to like go to an Elizabeth Warren conference and oh, my be God, angry shut and, up <laughs> and get menopause before I leave. And we're all synced, everyone. Talk about. <laughs> Why we want to cut every man's dick off and, you know, serve yeah, it at the next that... company luncheon. I don't know. I just I, I feel like that's all it is. Is like I don't understand the point of those like women's empowering leadership business stuff, because I'm just like, why is it so different than anything else? Just like being empowered in general. Well, I mean, I mean, just to be the devil, devil's advocate, I would say that if you are a woman in your 40s, for example, and you've been working in the business world since you were 21, maybe 22, you have seen some shit. I have definitely seen some shit. I have actually been uh, passed over for promotions or leads in sales because I'm a female or I wasn't sexy enough as a female. I've had men criticize how I wore my hair or did my nails or what, my, what clothes I wore and, and told me I needed to change them. It, you would never hear anyone say that to a man ever. So when you're in a male dominant world, uh, my guess is these kinds of things probably are kind of like, look, we understand you. We've all been through this. You know, this is how you get through it. So on that aspect, I can see how it would be helpful or celebrating a women's, you know, uh, success in business. But I personally find those places uncomfortable. And I'm uncomfortable with any large crowd of anything. You know, whether there's it's all women or all men, it doesn't matter to me. I'm like, oh, don't make me go. You know, it's like I don't. But some women really need that. We're not like the typical female. No, I mean, I well, I've never had anybody say anything to me as far as, you know, 
work in being a woman, but that's because oh, most have. of them have viewed me as one of the guys. And right. so Not me. because I kind of have like the mouth of a sailor and if they <laughs> like tried to get like not fresh, but like, you know, they thought they wanted to get spunky with me and I'd be like, sure, you're not going to want to do that. It's not going to end well. Yeah, for you. it's I'm, never, a, I'm a lot yeah. smarter than you. So I've never had my ass spanked or anything while I'm at the copy machine or anything. No, like that, but I mean, but... like if someone thinks that they're they're going to like, you know, try and strong arm me on something <clears throat> like that, I'd be sure. like, that's going to end really poorly for you. Oh, I, I told you the story how someone tried to do that to me. He threatened me and he, not physically. Well, I actually did have someone physically threaten me once because I wasn't doing what he wanted. And he was so frustrated. He wanted to hit me. And it was really. <laughs> I'd be like, go ahead. See what fucking oh, happens. God, I did. He made he was yelling really loud and he got really red and he got right in my face about something because I, I didn't make him a priority over other people. I would have grabbed him by the fucking throat and I would have thrown him <laughs> against the cubicle wall and I would have grabbed a pair of scissors and stuck him right in his neck. And I'd be like, you come near me one more time. I will slice your balls off. I will feed them down your throat. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, I didn't say that, but it was pretty close. And so I said, come one step closer and find out what happens. I got real calm quiet while he was screaming and yelling and he walked away because he knows I would have stabbed him with a with a pencil or something in my hand and um, he ended up quitting two days later good yeah it was fine but what really bugged me about that incident is not one man and I was surrounded by men in all these different offices not one man came out not one man came to assist or or intervene in any way whatsoever they would have allowed him and I remember sitting there going not one of these men that I work with is even remotely a gentleman like they claim to be because they sat here and watched some 25 year old girl be verbally assaulted and fret and threatened physically by a man who was 40 years old and did nothing. And I'm like, and that, by the way, is why there's these women empowerment conferences. That's exactly why these exist, because of situations like that. It happens all the time. I gave up on that dream eons ago with our father eons ago mm-hmm. eons right. ago i'm like no one will ever stand up for me ever that dream, well, we that were dream died a <laughs> long time ago and so I, I i don't expect a man to do dick for me a woman will a woman would see that if there was a woman near my presence that a woman would walk to be like what the fuck do you think you're doing asshole get the probably, fuck out of here probably but I because mean, i would i don't expect a man to stand up for me i don't expect it you can't you can't you definitely can't assume anything in the workplace when it comes to men i mean maybe maybe culture has changed but i don't think it's changed that much where you have to if the culture is male dominated dominated and you're one of like three females you, you best be having a good relationship with those other two ladies because seriously, sometimes that's the way it is. And I maybe it's changed. Maybe it's oh, changed. I but mean, I I don't think so. No, that doesn't happen, Jamie. I mean, no. not not anymore. I mean, that right. That's just you can't even like raise your eyebrow towards someone without you know getting a complaint. <laughs> I know. Oh, my God. You can't even raise your eyebrow at a guy without getting a complaint. Daryl told me about this happened years ago when he was working at another place. And this guy, one of the the men that worked there, held the door open for a woman and she lodged a complaint. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. That's insane. Can you imagine? Yeah. She probably found it demeaning. And she found it sexist. Yeah. And I'm like, and if he had waited for you to open the door for him, she would have lodged a complaint. Like it was a no win. There was it was a no win. I thought that was really If ridiculous. I was the HR person, I would have been like, it is just a habit to be polite. It had nothing to do with your inability with you. to open the door. <laughs> I know. So it's crazy. I, I it's think so weird. I think that you need to just take it in stride and let's focus on the work at hand. Please. Okay, so moving on. I read this the other day and I, I forgot to mention it to you. So I wanted to ask you what you thought about this. I don't keep track of time. Most people don't. So they did this study called the six minute rule. It was commissioned by Trojan condoms and this council, the sex information education council, they did a research study of a, a 1500 people that, uh, and it was all sexualities. And they say that, uh, let's see, the study have found that people of all sexualities who engage in six or more minutes of pre-sex affectionate behavior, which is kissing, cuddling, below the belt stuff, were more likely to say they were very sexually satisfied. 
56% of men and 55% of women were more satisfied if they engaged in post-sex behavior, like cuddling, for the same amount of time, about mm-hmm. six minutes. And they're like, why is this a sweet spot? And basically they're saying because it expands the amount of time you spend being sexual with your partner. Mm-hmm. So you're literally adding 10 to 12 minutes of, of sex that's not maybe penetration, mm-hmm. but it allows people to be more um uh, i don't know open or feeling open or whatever i'm not sure how you would how i would word that I'm but guessing, it says I'm, oh go ahead mm-hmm. no, no no that's it i was just gonna say i'm guessing there's a science behind it too because i'm guessing yeah. like once you kind of get in that turned on mode there's probably some cord- yes. sort of chemical or enzyme or something that's released and mm-hmm. you know it just kind of starts the engine and so the longer you can make it all last you know, right. the more together and intimate the whole experience feels. And right. so um, it just it just draws out the closeness, I guess. I personally, <laughs> this is going to sound <laughs> terrible. What? I personally have experienced most in my life, well, not with all partners, but with a lot of partners. They really struggle with foreplay. Mm. Well, OK, first of all, I have a question. What is foreplay to you? What what is the definition of foreplay to you? Because I think my definition is different, and I've always thought it was different than anybody else. My definition of foreplay, for some people, is sex, which I did not realize. Hmm? Not not penetration, but oh, like other oral forms sex. Of, yes, isn't oral is oral sex foreplay to you? No. See, to me, it is. I thought it was <laughs> because you can have an orgasm, Jamie, with oral sex. I do. Yeah, that's no. That that's oh. that's. But I can have orgasms more than one way. So it, no, me, I it's foreplay. understand that. But I mean, foreplay. <laughs> yes. You don't orgasm. I mean, foreplay uh, is like you know, okay. kissing and touching and got it, got it, licking and sucking. Not that area, but I mean, you know, other parts okay, and okay. Hey, and I embracing and you know, just kind of like <sighs> warming up and. Oh, I need a little sucks. bit. I need a little bit more warming up than the average bear, maybe. I don't know. Oh, my God, please. Daryl and I was like, if I give him a look and he's like, you know, he jumps jumps on me just like that. And he's ready to go. And I'm like, really? Just like that? It just seemed like as soon as I was naked, then it was just kind of like, you know, and I'm just like, can we just, you know, can we just I can't get there like in seconds. And then the peen was just kind of like searching for the gush. And I'm just like, just let it drop (laughs) naturally. (laughs) You know, it'll it's it's coming. But God, you know, here's well, here's what's really funny. I read this and I'm like, okay, well, water's wet as well. It says even though men reported enjoying sexual encounters more if they followed the six minute rule, the study did show that they will still reach orgasm without it. What a shock. Um, It says, whereas the majority of women at 61 percent will not. (laughs) I'm like. Yeah. So perceiving intercourse on or men achieving orgasm as the main event is the biggest problem that our current outlook on sex is. So they think there has to be more of a focus on the before and after sex, sexual encounter than the actual main event. And I agree completely, completely. I it's, It is hard. But you know what? That comes with experience, in my opinion. Well, I mean... The reason why I prefer, well, because I don't like oral sex is, is that, I mean, receiving it. I, right. I prefer more foreplay because I need to get turned on if I'm going to have right. an orgasm during sex. If we just yes. hop to it, it's going to be a lot more difficult because, you know, it's one, it's difficult to have sex for that long of a time and mm-hmm. to get to that spot and then to stay at that spot and then get there you know i mean we're talking well 10 minutes 15 minutes you know and that's a bit of a task and so that's why i'm saying like you know let's just warm things up a bit and maybe it won't take so long well and not only that but i mean for me there are obviously times where we just get right to it just well, like of course anybody. i mean but i will say this by the time i'm getting warmed up he's almost done like there's a mismatch when we do it like that or in my whole life, if I've ever 
jumped in and we just immediately go to penetration. By the time I'm ready to really get things going for myself, he's like, <laughs> just like, oh, shit. <laughs> Great. I'll be right back. We Yeah. Yeah, I you know. know. It's it so, is difficult. Well, and that's yeah. like what I told you. Is that <laughs> my whole life, with the exception of one person, one person in my whole life, I typically hold back. Oh, yeah. Like what what I, I'm really feeling, because mm -hmm. if I went like full freak mode. Oh, they'd come immediately. Exactly. And yeah, so I know. Trust. I, I've been I, there. I just one day. Would like to one day you'll be able to let loose. I, I don't think that's going to happen. I really don't think. That's well, I'll tell you what, Paula, it does happen because it happened to me. What I like about my my lover now, my lover, I hate that word. Um, what I like now is that if, if if I issue the challenge, he's all challenge accepted. Like he is all in. And, you know, that's never happened before. And it's probably why we got married, because I'm like, I've never met I've never met my sexual match ever. So now I can't let him go. Ever <laughs> like it has to stay that way. I've never, you know? I've never had someone last through one of my orgasms. Oh, see, I have now. Really? But I mean, oh yeah, I'm not kidding. Be jealous, ladies. Wow. <laughs> reach those, reach those goals. <laughs> Just reach those goals. Um, yeah. So six minutes before and after, which extends the session. And like I've always maintained, uh, as I so that's like a whole now, half an hour. <laughs> yeah what i've always loved about like i said when i started to, to really enjoy sex i went oh this is what they were all talking about why isn't more people doing this like how does this go away when you become stable in a in a relationship like why is this the first thing to die it's the funnest thing to do with your body you feel amazing why would you let this slip you know what i mean it's like the best thing ever i don't know why people don't do it like every night and every morning well, I mean, that I, well, right now you're hungry, but I mean, see, this when is you're the worst thing is, is like, I'm like in, I don't, it's like beyond a peak. I'm like in the fucking Alps and <laughs> I am I'm not laughing in, at your disdain. I am in no way, shape or form remotely in a position to have a relationship. <laughs> and this just tells me how much, if there's a God, he hates me. <laughs> Hate you. Then he just doesn't exist because I'm being punished I got you. <laughs> by the universe, Mother Nature, God, the devil. I don't know. All of them. <laughs> They're so like, they really we all got to... together and we decided we're going to fuck up Paula's life. Yay! <laughs> Sexually. So speaking of that, if you do not have someone to have the six minute rule with or to implement the six minute rule... I okay, so I read this brief article that someone did about the top rated sex toys on Amazon. And I read it and I went, nope, none of these are good because there is this new thing that's going on with the individual bullet vibrators that we love so bad. Mm -hmm. They a lot of people have changed the size and shape of them, and I don't understand it. They're all the size and shape of a lipstick, like a traditional lipstick chub. <laughs> And I'm like, these aren't satisfying. This is dumb. It's like, I saw one that looked like an electric toothbrush where the tip that was supposed to go on your clit was like the size of a pencil eraser. Ow. And I said, you're going to kill somebody with that thing. Like, what are you doing? Like, that is literally going to burn your clit off. Why would you think that's satisfying? Well, the that's thing terrible. Is, is when they're that small, they get lost because, I mean, things get slippery. You know? Well, not only that, but it's like, what do we, what, we're just going to ignore everything surrounding the clitoris? Like, none of that needs any kind of nerve stimulation? It's so stupid. So anyway, I did, I compiled my own. Now, I realize that there are women out there who enjoy uh, the dildo or the long, you know, the penis-shaped ones and all of that. I don't, and I don't think you do either, right? I just don't... <sighs> No, because I've tried I've tried vibrators that look like penises and I hate them. I I'm so not able to deal with it. The only thing that belongs in there is a penis or a baby exactly. coming out. I mean, that's just right. That's my... right. So so you and I are big fans of the bullet, mm -hmm. which is an egg shaped 
vibrator. Now there's wireless ones, which is lovely for those of us who want to have the app, if there's an app or whatever. There are some that are that you can have on your smartphone. I've had uh, guys talk about the wireless ones where they get mm-hmm. to hold like the remote and they're like, oh. yeah, I don't like that. They, oh, they think the idea is so sexy. And I'm just like, no. you know what? I'm like, it would just be annoying more than anything because, you know, I'd be over at the freaking, you know, hors d'oeuvres <laughs> to like be like, oh, these are nice. And all of a sudden I'd be like, Yee! I'd be like, really? Be like, really? <laughs> You turn around and give them the look. I'm like, I'm eating. I'm having a wonton right now. Like, what are you, you doing? Know, talking to my mom or something like that and be like, <laughs> she's like, it's like, do you hear something? Are my hearing aid batteries going down? Oh, God. No, mom. No, I'll be right back, you know? And yeah, it's just like at no real. point in the evening, I'm probably not even going to get off. It'll just get hot and, oh, yeah. and, and like, you know, blistered or something. And I'd be like, <laughs> I'm taking this thing right. off. I'd be like, here, put this in your pocket. Oh, God. Be like, thanks me. for ruining the fun you guys so on that note i did find some that i thought you and i could discuss and these are all very affordable um now if you are a woman who struggles with orgasm we highly recommend these as a starter because you will absolutely you will and by the way I hope people are doing it. i hope you guys figure it out and and just purchase these all of these can be purchased on amazon here is one that I found interesting. This one's thirty dollars, so this is this is the um, the most expensive of the four that I thought of. It's the wireless remote control bullet vibrator sex toy, but it is rechargeable. It has it is uh, it looks like a mouse, like a computer mouse. Okay, but the remote control is it's you know you can hold it, it but it's wireless, so there's no wire between the two items. So. I, it says couple, but I don't know what the hell, but because just like what we talked about, you could like have somebody else do the controls for you. But I mean, if I'm using a vibrator, it, I'm, there's nobody in the room, basically. Oh, the way I yeah. I mean, it used to be uh, like a combo deal, but I don't mm-hmm. think I'm going to, I just don't see myself doing that again. I don't know. I mean, maybe one yeah. day, but I don't know. I mean, if I have to pull out a vibrator during sex, things aren't going well. Well, it was just kind of like a polish off thing because it just didn't exactly. happen. And so- right. That's what I mean. For me, that means if, if nothing, if nobody comes to the party, I will ultimately come to the party. It just may not be the way we thought it would be. Exactly. Anyway, so it's a vibrating egg. It's got a rechargeable little thing. But in the middle of it is a little uh, extra huh huh for the clit- for the clitoris on top of massaging the whole area. I actually really liked it. I mean, I haven't tried it or anything, but the the look of it looked like this could be this could be some fun to play with. So, and it's waterproof and it's hot pink. I thought it was cute. So, it's by Sex Rabbit and uh it's $30. So, there you go. Uh, the next one, Cal Exotics is the brand. Apparently, that is the brand. So these are their three. They have this one called, it's the Dual Bunny Teaser. It's a double bullet vibrator with a rabbit tickler. And it is two eggs. And it comes with a one that looks like an egg that looks like a little tiny one of the rabbit dildos. But it's an egg with just the little rabbit ears on it. Okay. Can you t- see what I can you envision? So it, is it like the little clit stimulator thing? Yes, but Ooh. so basically, you know, we've seen those rabbit dildos that were very pop- made very popular to me I don't by know. Sex in the City. <laughs> yeah, I would never do it, but I understand what I mean. What the it looks point of the sharp and pokey. Maybe some women don't so have too. that sensitive of, of a clitoris, but I mean, ah, I to me, it's like touching, it doesn't look comfortable touching your eyeball. I don't really would. I would never use the rabbit ears, but these it's almost like the little egg has a little rabbit hat on. Okay. So, you know, maybe, you know, if you need a little extra, you know, but there's two of them and they're connected. So it's like, well, especially if you're, you know, I mean, you know, you can use them for whatever. I mean, they're basically you can they're all water soluble. They're all you know, you can put them anywhere you want. So use your imagination. If you have two, you can go crazy. If you're you know, if you have a prostate and you want to, you know, you can do whatever you want. Uh, this one is the wired bullet vibrator. This is the OG. This is the one that you and I swear by. Okay. And it is the wired bullet vibrator, but this one comes in gold instead of silver. It's $8.98 and it is exactly what it says. It's an adult vibe egg massager. It's shaped like a little egg. It is wired to a remote control and it, 
it's perfectly fit for your hand and the egg does exactly what you need it to do. Mm-hmm. And it is, we, I swear by it, tried and true. Like you cannot get a better orgasm with the vibrator, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I, I've got it. I just love that it. it's a, I love that it's gold. I mean, they're what they're upping their game. It's no longer silver. <laughs> I just, thought it was oh, I just great. hope it doesn't they're, wear off. They're not five dollars anymore, but they're eight ninety eight. I mean, I'm it's still worth it. Under ten bucks. Yeah, you can't beat it. Um, and then the final one, it's the same exact thing, but it's just the double bullet, just two wired bullets for eight forty three. I don't know why it's cheaper. I think it's because it's silver and not gold. Probably so. That's it. So those are the top four from most innovative down to just get the job done, enjoy your day, go out to work and slay the dragon, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm I was in I'm kind of curious now. I kind of want to get the gold one. I don't know what I'm going to do with two of them or with, you know, whatever. But I kind of like, you know, you can't donate those things. You kind of just have to throw it away. Well, yeah, but. They have a male line now. They are exactly the same thing, but they're called Colt. And they have like this heavy rubberized remote control grip. And I think that's the the only difference. I go, why is this catering to men? Because it's called Colt and it's got this black rubberized remote control, but it's still the same egg. And so I don't know. So I saw (laughs) one the other day. It was um, it was for guys as well. Mm -hmm. So on one end, it was like a nub of a penis. And then on the other end, it looked like a butt plug. So I think you they were both for the anus. Mm, But they said something. Yeah, like you could switch share, switch your route. No, no. Oh, I think you could like, you know, start one way and the other. Yeah, like you you had two options, I guess. And um universal yeah and this army knife of, of dildos and i think the, the the they said it was for uh prostate pleasure or something like that mm-hmm. or yeah i yeah, guess yeah. men's prostates are really yes like sensitive or something i don't really know very but. and for men who think they don't like it you've just never had it done to you i don't know i like i said i stuck my finger up some guy's ass and he didn't even feel it so but we oh, were wow, then really drunk so there's no way it, that was if a woman, that was the poop a, nail. <laughs> oh God! If a woman ever if a woman ever suggests that they do that to you, men, let them do it, and just you're gonna love it. I don't think Trust he me. asked. I just did it. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was doing it, just he, checking the oil, just checking the oil. He wasn't doing anything, and I'm like, "Do you feel that?" And he's like, "Feel what?" And I'm like, "I'm, t- oh, I'm God. like, I totally have my finger in your asshole right now." And he's like, "No, you don't." <laughs> Way too intoxicated. Oh Way too intoxicated. It was so funny. That's horrible. You know what? I mean, I've done it, but I mean, I have to really be into it for that to happen. That's very primal for me. Mm. I've done it, though. Our sex, um, our sex was always primal. It sounds like it. It sounds like there's a lot of grunting and hay on the ground. There was a lot of everything. <laughs> there's a lot of everything. Okay, so uh, now, <laughs> by the way... If you choose to go and purchase any of these items, um, it is if you're if you're not a person who is into that, uh, there's a lot of very graphic products on Amazon in the sex toy department. Um, There are a lot of silicon uh, made products for men. Like I saw one and they're all like almost life size where there is a big pair of butt cheeks and a super exposed vagina. And then so it'd be like if you're doing somebody from behind, except where the back is are two large boobs. Wait, so what? like you can get it all in one fail swoop. It's very and there's a lot of things like that. I'm it, like, why is there is so it like many? a torso or yes, just the torso. And it's like, why are there so many super graphic uh, vagina things that people can put their dick in because it's so men are gross. visual creatures jamie yes i know but you know what i did say see no diversity only white there was no well, other did colors. you click on it to make sure that there weren't other options <laughs> no i did not i suppose i see, should have done my you research should have. you don't know there could have been other shades it's Correct. just like there when could you have been... <laughs> you know are looking at a t-shirt and then you click on it and yeah, then you can get right. it in like blue and red there, so. there could have been pale all the way to deep 
I did not even think about that. So, um, yeah, so be prepared for that. But I, I highly encourage if you, if you need a little orgasm, ladies, please go. And I'm gentlemen too. Sure. Why not? Um, okay. So last night, uh, I've discovered a show on Netflix and I, it is the, sh- it is a shit show. I'm sure, but I've only seen one episode, but I cannot wait. It's called love is blind. And this is the premise. It's a reality show. Okay. And it's a, it's a take on some a variety of dating shows, actually. Uh, so it's 15 men and 15 women. They're separated into two dorms. And at first, they're only allowed to communicate with each other from isolated pods. They cannot see what they look like. You can only communicate. Okay. So the point is, is an experiment to see whether or not love transcends concepts like race age physical appearance etc like can there be a connection without seeing somebody at all no and so <laughs> i watched the first episode uh now these are people who are actually married ages in which you would start thinking about marriage there's there's one or two that are under the age of 25 and i don't know why why they did that because i don't really know anyone at, and i don't know any man at the age of 24 who knows what he wants in a wife but He's there. Okay. So, but most of them are 26 and to to like 31 or 34. So they're all, but the point, and they're all attractive in their own way. The point is they, they are all sick of online dating because all they, all you can go by is a photo and then you meet them and you're like, oh, this was dumb. Yeah, you're attractive, but yuck. So they're taking the concept of that and reversing it. Wait, do, so you're in online dating, mm -hmm. do people not talk on the phone before they, me? I don't think so. I think if you like if you're on Tinder and you see a hottie, you go swipe right or swipe whatever swipe you do and then you you hook up, you meet and then you usually just hook up, but I don't know. Okay, so there's see, no the one time that I did the online, well not the one time, like did I do it two times? Uh, uh yeah. Okay, two, two yes. times that I did the online dating. I think I insisted that if they were going to ask me out that they had to call and do it. And so, oh, okay, because well, you're because my one friend, well, not my one friend, the one guy, he's just like, hey, I got a question for you. He's like, what are you doing Tuesday? I'm like, if you're thinking about asking me out, I'm like, you're going to have to call me. And so mm -hmm. I said, here's my number. And so then like five minutes later, he called me. He's like, well, so what are you doing funny. Tuesday? <laughs> so I'm like, I had <laughs> to hear cute. your voice. I'm like, if you were like, you know, had had like a helium voice <laughs> or like sounded like a, you know, a creep or a, you know, serial killer. I, I was going to have to be able to say no. <laughs> All right. So this show. So the premise is that these 15 people now they have it's a 30 day or 40 day experiment. So in the first part of the experiment, if you fall for somebody to the point that you think you can marry them, you propose. And what? if they accept, if they accept, you meet physically, you will meet. And then uh, assuming that goes well. They send you to Mexico for uh, a time for you to get together and figure out physically if you are compatible. And that can be whatever that means to you, which is obviously sex and just being together in situations in a lovely place. So what becomes clearer as the show goes on is that what will eventually drive most of these couples apart is what brought them together, the experiment. Contestants are so willing to believe in the idea that love is blind that they ignore fundamental incompatibilities that would have been made very clear within a few weeks of a normal date. Norm, normal dating. They ignore wildly mismatched communication styles, lack of physical attraction, and hostile families so they can recapture the heady magic of the pods. So I watched episode one. I'm all in. I love it. I cannot wait. So what's interesting, though, is the first couple uh, who I think is going to make it. Uh, sh he's white and she's she's black mm -hmm. and they know this. And, you know, these people that come into this, they are aware that there will be racial change, racial diversity there. So all these people are OK with that. That's not it. The problem was, I mean, are they allowed to tell each other their race? Well, OK, for example, this one guy goes, OK, so you're African-American. And she goes, why does that matter? And he goes, well, I can just tell by your voice. And she changes her tone. She goes, I'm white. And he goes, oh, you are? And she whispers no and crosses his name off the list. Like she's absolutely not going to deal with a guy where her color is the first thing he cares about. So that's done. But I think it's acknowledged. It's just not supposed to be the thing. Mm -hmm. So when they decide that they want to become engaged, 
the second that happens, she's being interviewed and she goes, I'm an advocate for black rights in America. I'm very strong about that. She goes, the fact that I'm in love with someone who's white is crazy. My, my friends and family aren't going to be able to believe it because they're very strongly in the activism world. He's a scientist from Maine. Like he's just this regular dude. But what she didn't realize was his last w- girlfriend that he was really in love with was black. Mm. So he doesn't care. But so I'm really curious to see how that works. I really hope it works out. They're both really great people individually. So I hope I, I mean, I'm assuming, but there are some other ones where they showed a preview of people who think they're in love and they're going to meet. He literally turns around and goes, she did not look at all like I thought. Wow. <laughs> He walks away. I'm like, oh my God, I cannot wait to watch the rest of it. So there's only five episodes out right now, but I'm going to watch them all this weekend because I can't wait to find out what happens. But this is a, this is Netflix. There's nudity, there's alcohol, there's uh, swearing, there's the whole thing. So it's like, it's a, it's a real, it's totally different than what ABC or TLC shows. Like this is the real deal. So, like, they're getting in a fight. She goes, don't you fucking talk to me like that. You know, like, there's a lot of that. And I'm like, oh, I'm all in. I cannot wait to watch this shit show. I'm excited. That sounds awful. I can't wait. (laughs) Well, I mean, I I guess it's better than The Bachelor in Paradise, but. I love Bachelor in Paradise, too. I love them all. happened to you? God. You know what? I love, I love it. I just love people. It's so heavily scripted. And everything is so, like, you know. Uh, situational you know you pump these people full of booze and just see what happens it's like an it's a social experiment and I think that's why I enjoy it so much because you know now that I'm old I've seen all of this a million times a million times I've even been some of those people so for me it's great meanwhile I'm watching documentaries about uh (laughs) highly uh dependent people in a mental institution slash prison in France why are you doing that to yourself? Because I love the one guy, Jean Pierre. He's so awesome. Jean Pierre. Yeah. Aww. The very last scene is they're all getting ready to go to bed, and mm. they catch him in the bathroom. He's trying to put this cream in his hair because when he got there, he, he's all silver now. But when he got there, he had blonde hair. And what is? It's just a mask for conditioning my hair. Mm-hmm. They're like, this is lightning cream. And he's like, where did you get this? And he's like, no. He's like, it's just conditioning. <laughs> and they're like, rinse this out. You can't put this in your hair and leave it in all night. And so he got mad. And then mm. at the very end of the documentary, they're like, Jean-Pierre was approved to dye his hair blonde. <laughs> and so I'm like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that, let's do our ugly and awkward moments of the week. Like I told you earlier, I'm having like the world's worst period. And so I've had horrible PMS. I don't know if this is related, but I've lost my orgasm. <gasps> no. Maybe I you just had too many happened. and now you just ran out. <laughs> no, I don't think that's what it is. I I don't know what it is. I can't seem to. I mean, I'm concentrating. I'm. I don't know. I think I get freaked out and then I start thinking about too many things. And then, you know, before I know it, like a whole like half an hour has gone by and I'm just like, what is taking so long, you know? And then so the other night, like I was tired, but I was just like, this is going to happen. And I literally fell asleep and I woke up the next morning with my freaking vibrator. You do that a lot, you know. (laughs) tangled around my thigh and the batteries were dead because it had just vibrated itself to death. Right. And I'm just like, what is going on? So, well, I mean, I, it's mental. I mean, we hate to admit so? it. Well, yeah, we hate to, you know, we hate to admit women. We're not like guys. We're not all physical. It takes the reason that it takes us six minutes on average to get turned on is because we have to get mentally there. You know what I mean? And sometimes, like, there have been times where if we do go straight for the sex, it's because we've been we've been fucking around with each other all day, you know, innuendos or hugging or kissing. Right. And by the time we actually get naked, it's like, just, just, just do it. Because it's, right. been, it's been 12 hours of foreplay. Finally. <laughs> right. But for you, it's like, you're just trying to do, it's like, I just need to get this done and move on with my life. But that's just not how women are. They don't operate like that. So it's like you have to find a way to 
pre-lube yourself before you can get to the orgasm. And you're not living a very sexual life right now. All you're doing is being a mom and becoming a student. There's nothing sexual about those things. So it's like what I'm hopeful for, we're going to Reno next weekend. I'm not going to have sex in Reno. No, bring your, I'm just saying maybe you can have some, you know, maybe you'll be a little more uh, free. You'll feel a little more I'm open. not bringing my vibrator. Why? That's, that's gross. What? No. You're going to be the only one. The only one who matter. decides. Oh, so me and my vibrator are having a weekend away <laughs> together. That's hey, stupid. Bring an arsenal. Who knows? I'm just saying what. Regardless of whether you bring I'd it or not. I'd rather take a risk and find someone and have a one night stand than have a weekend alone with my vibrator. God. <laughs> I would, you know. It's just, you, it reminds me of the freaking 40 year old virgin where he like, you know, <laughs> puts down the pictures of his mother and puts on silk pajamas and starts playing Lionel Richie. <laughs> with his tissues. Hello. Is yeah. Me? And starts like, lighting oh. candles. <laughs> Because he can't watch porn anymore. He's like, I can't watch this. He's like, I don't want your big box of porn, Dave. Well, it's just so disgusting. Well, that I don't know how, how men I shared mean, how porn. many more. I mean, how many movies can you watch where it ends with the girl with her, you know, mouth open, jerking, come into her face? <laughs> well, not only that, but back in the day when you didn't have digital and the Internet and you had to like go out and actually, God forbid, rent a video to watch oh, it God. those guys that walked into that back room they were just a bunch of fucking creeps well they even if they weren't it's like how do you not portray yourself as a creep like how do you not can you imagine having to walk past like little girls to walk in that back room and they're just kind of staring at you because oh. they know what that back room is and they probably felt like the lowest forms <laughs> of life especially when the mom's like come on honey let's get out of here <laughs> we'll go to another video store <laughs> Hopefully yeah. they didn't put like the children's section near there. Well, for me, it's like, how can you know, how can you rent a used video of porn knowing how many disgusting, filthy hands have taken that out and put it back in the little rental box? Those That's filthy, gross. unwashed hands, because men never wash their hands. So it's Debbie like, does Dallas is three days late. That's going to be an <laughs> extra dollar fifty charge. Can I just keep it? Yep. <laughs> yes you can oh, really just go to like one of those shops and just buy one yeah i don't know but but my my point is is that i think you, you yes you've lost your orgasm but i don't i think it's a mental not a physical is my point so yeah hopefully. i'm sorry that you woke up with your dead vibrator next to you <laughs> wrapped around my thigh wrapped around your thigh like an animal <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, so mine is my typical awkward moment. I try to engage with a stranger at my door. Oh, God. I know. Did you give him a hug? No, it was... No. Um, Okay, so Daryl traveled this week. He was in San Diego for a couple of days. And so uh, you know and I know that he loves any reason to celebrate love. He's a softie, so he sends me flowers. Mm -hmm. And so because it's the week of Valentine's Day, the places that are delivering flowers, they're using literally every delivery service known to man to get all the orders out. So I got FedEx. Now, FedEx required a signature. Normally, they don't. But for whatever reason, this this company required a signature. Eight o'clock in the morning. Luckily, I had woken up early and I was dressed. Because 8 a.m. is pretty early for me to be presentable at the door. To get a fucking flower delivery, I'd be like, oh, my God. I'm like, this is almost going to piss me off. Right? So he knocks on the door twice. I'm like, okay, what the hell? So I'm like, well, it's not Jehovah's Witnesses. They're not even done with their coffee yet. So I go to the door and I open it. And it's a FedEx guy. They're still putting on their uh, (laughs) T-length skirts. Yes, and their nylons. So uh, (laughs) I open up the door and I go, hi. He goes, hey, hello. And he's rushed. Because he's obviously, it's Valentine's Day. They're delivering a shit ton of stuff. He's probably been going since like 6 a.m. Yes. So I go, okay. So I sign it and um, he's holding the box. And behind him is this cat that kind of lives in the neighborhood. It's a very large tomcat, uh, Tabby. And he is g- giving him the evil eye, this this FedEx guy. And I, so I'm signing my name. I go, hey, it looks like you got a friend. He goes, what? And I go, you have a friend. He goes, what are you talking about? And I, and I point behind him and there's a cat just glaring at him. He goes, oh, yeah, that cat had tried to attack me when I got here. I'm like, what? So we start having this conversation. He's like, you know what? I really got to go. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I'm like, what is wrong with me? I'm like, enjoy your cat. God. 8 a.m. More. 8 a.m. 8 o'clock in the morning. And had I'm, you even brushed your teeth? Uh, no. I was drinking coffee. <laughs> 
So Oh, oh that that makes up for it. I, and I'm sure it was just even more better. <laughs> Jeez. It's not like I came in and gave him a kiss. I'm just saying. I know, but he- See, just like I said, I am trying to be just conversational and people think I'm flirting. It's not flirting. I'm Yeah, just- but you tried that with the neighbor and you always were showing him your boobs. I did show him my boobs. Because I was wearing a see-through dress, and I you're always a wearing a see-through black something with a sh- with the sun shining on you, and <laughs> it was white. <laughs> it was a white dress on Whatever top. Whatever it. it was, and he's just like, "Could you please stop showing me your breasts?" <laughs> it's like I am a married man, miss. Anyway, I know it was awkward. So that is funny. It was funny. Well, I think that's a wrap for today. Mm-hmm. So thanks everybody for joining us. Hope you had a good Valentine's Day. Hopefully you did something fun, or if not, hopefully you did something that uh, wasn't awful and you enjoyed doing it by yourself. Yes. Do you like to do it yourself? She said she likes to do it. (laughs) (laughs) We just encourage you to shop Amazon through the Ugly Truth link, uh, lipandclip.com, and then um, Olivia is selling Girl Scout cookies through the end of February, I believe. Okay, so end of Feb. Yeah, I think it's February 25th, but I could be wrong. Okay, well, we'll do a last-minute reminder Yes, so go to our Facebook page, click on the Girl Scout cookie link, and purchase some cookies. Other than that, have a fabulous weekend, and we'll see you on Wednesday. Wednesday. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening and sharing the show. See you next time on The Ugly Truth.